Okay, now that I've got that brief overview laid down, I can go into a bit more detail. Um, but again, just to summarise, resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolts. There's a converging circuit on the dendrites of inhibitory and excitatory um, um, cells. They cause slight differences in the influx of sodium. The summation of the influx of sonet sodium, known as electrotonic potentials, these small kind of flexible um, differences in, in electrical potential cause a summation around the soma and particularly around the hillock. When the summation of all this excitation inhibition um, reaches um, around minus 50 millivolts, that triggers voltage gate and sonium channels in the hillock to open and at this point action potential begins. Um, I'm going to go into the cell membrane and I'm going to explain a bit more about um, resting membrane potential before I explain about how the cell depolarizes. So of course we have our phospholipid bilayer as always and the main thing that maintain, maintains resting membrane potential is the leaky so is the leaky potassium channel. Sorry, um, that's the most important um, channel in terms of the maintenance of resting membrane potential. There is one other channel which is responsible for long-term maintenance. But this is the most important one in terms of maintenance of resting membrane potential at minus 70 millivolts. The other thing I'm thinking of is the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Okay, and all this does is it exchanges sodium and potassium. Um, most people describe it as like a revolving door type um, of membrane protein. So it pushes for every three sodiums that it exports, it imports two potassiums um, and so therefore helps maintain the um, helps maintain potassium as the major intracellular ion and helps maintain sodium as the major extracellular ion. But I want to I really want to emphasize this is important for long term regulation. This is what's really important second to second in terms of the resting membrane potential. I'm now going to go on um, if you remember this diagram we did before. So our electrotonic potentials have come in. The summation has been over 50 millivolts, and this has caused a depolarization. So the way this works is there's a sodium channel. This is a voltage-gated sodium channel. And when the resting membrane potential reaches around minus 50 millivolts, this channel is sensitive to that charge and therefore it opens at minus 50 millivolts. This allows a massive influx of sodium, an influx into the neuron. So this is inside, don't want to confuse you. And that's outside. And that's what causes depolarization because we're reversing what's normal, which is for potassium to be the major, major intracellular ion. We're reversing that by flooding the cell with sodium and that's basically what an action potential is. So this local, there'll be a local area of depolarization. So this becomes positively charged when it should be negatively charged and the neighboring area of the cell will be negatively charged. But this positive flux will cause more channels to open and we'll get a kind of flood of this positive charge going down. That's kind of um, slightly sloppy explanation of what saltatory conduction is, but so that's what happens. So if this is, if we do a graph and resting membrane potential is minus 70, so this is resting membrane potential. The electrotonic potentials, the summation within the soma, 
so we're focusing on the charge around here but we might be slight inhibitory and slight excitatory but nothing's happened because our threshold this is our threshold is minus 50 millivolts but when the summation reaches minus 50 the sodium channels open it's the sodium channels and we get a sudden poof of sodium let me cut that alright so like that so we get a sudden influx of sodium so this is sodium going in so sodium channels have opened so sorry my phone keeps ringing so the sodium channels have opened like so and we get a flood of sodium going into the cell then what happens is within the cell membrane we also have voltage gated potassium channels and these are what help repolarize the membrane the voltage gated um, potassium channels are triggered at around plus 40 millivolts so this is the trigger point for the potassium channel so when it reaches plus 40 the sodium channels which are sensitive close and voltage gated potassium channels open so we get a rapid repolarization and in fact we get what's called a hyper repolarization at this stage the hyper repolarization is due to the fact that we have leaky leaky um, potassium channels and they stay leaky all the time um, as far as I'm aware so the voltage gated potassium channels are open, the voltage gated sodiums are closed because we're at plus 40 flooding of, potass of um, potassium um, and this is what causes repolarization then the voltage gated potassium channel will close and slowly due to the leaky potassium channels will get a return to resting membrane potential which is, which is here again resting membrane potential which again is minus 70 so there it is it's pretty it's pretty kind of straightforward now we have something called a refractory period in nerve cells and that's because the sodium voltage gate sodium channel can be in one of three states it can be opened it can be closed or it can be inactive now obviously once threshold is reached minus 50 for this phase here it is opened the sodium channel is opened then it reaches minus 40 which is its cutoff point but potassium voltage gate channels start point for opening and it closes and during this phase it's not only closed but it's actually inactivated so a way of thinking about this is it's like it it's like it being locked so no matter what happens in the resting membrane potential the, this part of the membrane cannot fire an action potential again because the sodium voltage gate sodium channels are inactive and then there's a short part around here when it's just closed that means it can fire but in order to be triggered to fire the stimulus must be way above the normal threshold so there there we have it. That's a brief overview of depolarization in the membrane. What's opening? What what channels are opening and closing when? Resting membrane potential, and where this all begins in the cell to be continued.